My name is Alex, well, I'm not sure if I should say this out loud. Isn't that the point of blank, after all? A lack of something, an absence? And if I put it out there, out loud, and use it to establish myself as a presence, aren't I contradicting myself in some way? About two years ago, I created a pseudonym for myself. Blank. Alex Blank. A stage name when I perform musically and a pen name when a written work of mine gets published. I throw it in anywhere I can, even in everyday life. At first, it was about control over myself. The desire not to be fixed, constant, stagnant. But it also reveals something about another side of me, the blank one. The version of me who always separates herself from the group, who never lets herself be in tune with anyone. And that's what brings me to the purpose of this talk. I've been trying to find some sort of an explanation of myself for a long time. After researching personality types and disorders, I am now looking towards trying to receive a diagnosis for autism. Either way, human interaction does not come naturally to me at all. It's a skill I acquired, one that I keep developing along the way through observing, analyzing closely, mimicking even. Eventually, my authentic self, the one I always wanted so badly to communicate, merged with the mannerisms and phrases I picked up from normal people. Oh, no, that's a terrible word. Adjusted people. In math, there are positive numbers and negative ones. They complement each other so that a plus four and a minus four balance each other out. And I believe that's an analogy we can apply here. By always actively hiding, by leaving things unsaid, blank, I lean more and more upon the negative side. And it seems to me that, as opposed to these adjusted people, I don't add any positive value to the blankness I express. Because the thing about negative numbers is they don't exist in the real world. Well, except for some people's bank accounts. But my point is, negative numbers belong to the abstract. Which means if you push a negative force upon the world and don't supplement it with a positive one, you yourself begin to belong more to the abstract than to what we call reality. As far as math goes, I calculate my every step, every move, the way I'm going to sit on that chair, the way I'm going to stand up, the way I'm going to open and close the door. It's very strategic and exhausting. It feels like I have no real agency over myself. And so, for example, if I'm in a group and we're supposed to repeat something after someone in unison together, I don't do it. I refuse to do it. I refuse to echo a group expectation. And it may seem insignificant to some of you, but it's that tiny scrap of control, of choice I have. And it may seem like a negative action, but being negative in this way is my way of asserting myself as a part of the positive world. And yet, the self I'm talking about is an absence, not a presence. There's a passage on campus at King's, a tiny purple room. It's situated in between the corridor and a lecture theater. When waiting for a lecture, most people sit at the corridor. Well, not me. I, at least before the pandemic, sat in that tiny room, always. And I couldn't hide it because I had to enter it and be seen by all those people who were not afraid to sit at the corridor together. By sitting in that room, I was making my presence a negative and my absence a positive. I was literally right there with everyone else, yet I was tangibly separated by a wall. By sitting in that room, I was telling the world, act like I'm not here. And so, obviously, the world listened. The world listens to what I don't say. So what I do say gets lost in some kind of translation or subtraction, if you will. 
But each time you act out negatively, the unsaid does not just disappear. You do leave something behind. A pressure, a sediment, a dead weight. And it's invisible so no one can see it. And I'm surrounded by that pressure, which means I can't even express it. Are my experiences even valid at this point if all I have is the eponymous elephant in the room? And how do I even begin to explain this if I'm the actual elephant here? One day, in my first year of university, I was waiting for an evening event on campus. And for this particular anecdote, I think it's necessary for you to know that I have a history of eating disorders, so I have many peculiar behaviors and fears, such as, for example, being terrified of other people seeing me eat. On that day, as always, I had a plan. And that plan included eating something in between my last seminar and that evening event. Obviously, I had to find a space in which I would be alone. Quite a challenge with kings, I would say. So I went to the room in which the event was supposed to take place and the corridor outside turned out to be empty. I was thrilled. I took out my chocolate-coated almonds because out of all things, I was eating chocolate-coated almonds, and I began to consume them at a snail's pace, chewing in slow motion. But then, suddenly, a girl walked in. I actually knew her. She was part of the committee of the society organizing the event. As fast as I could, I swallowed the nut I had in my mouth, and I hid the pack of the remaining almonds under my scarf, which was on my lap. We exchanged smiles, hellos, as one does, another unsaid in the form of a courtesy. And then I just sat there, wondering what to do. I was frozen. I, I couldn't possibly take another bite while she was there, and so I left. And I found a space where I could be alone, and I finished the almonds, and then I came back without the almonds, but carrying something else. That dead, compressed, unsaid weight. And being seen by that girl, hiding the almonds, leaving or returning without them, I brought a piece of my unsaid world into the real world. And it became a sort of horcrux. I felt as fragmented and illusory as Voldemort. The girl who must be named Blake. As of now, I have tons of these horcruxes all over the world. Vancouver, Amsterdam, Bordeaux, Tooting Broadway. And I do this with every piece of myself. I have those little vignettes representing different parts of myself I negativize. These negativized scenarios where my absence screams more loudly than my presence, where the bloated air surrounding me is more forceful than my actual physical body, where I begin to wonder whether I was ever really here, or there, or anywhere in the first place. There is a certain paradox to this condition. It seems to me that many people, if they want to hide, they often do so in groups, chameleonizing themselves into anonymity. I hide outside of groups. I hide by separating myself. And somehow it works, even though it was never my original intention. I have become more or less invisible. Not to sound too dramatic, but people don't really notice me, and I am the type they struggle to be friends with. Even if I'm in a group and people are hugging each other goodbye, I'm often the only one who is asked if I'm okay with being hugged beforehand, as if I was a volcano ready to erupt at any second and they had to be careful around me. And technically, they're not always wrong, but that doesn't make me feel like any less of a freak. And all of this means this is not just in my head. There is something here. I have become separated, bland, unapproachable. There is some pressure around me that pushes people away. There are hills like white elephants around me, 
and I don't even talk to other people enough to be able to design my life based on Hemingway-styled, underbellied dialogue. Even in my own creative writing, there's barely any dialogue, which surely says something about me. However, there is power to this way of being, too. If you learn to manipulate it wisely or use it to your advantage. By living in the negative, in the abstract, you are not tethered to anything. You're not fixed. And that could, on some level, liberate you. You don't have to adhere to anyone else's rhythm. It almost seems like you're exempt from the regular order of things. People don't expect you to be a part of the world, so they let you do your own thing. And if you're a blank page, you can be filled with anything. Or not. You can just float. Like Dumbo, a flying elephant. I won't lie, though. Beneath the poeticized explanations and deeper meanings, in the moment, whatever I do feels insignificant. After all, there is nothing grand about not speaking when someone asks you to speak along with the group. Still, I can't help but defend myself back, you know? I may never be the type who is easy to talk to or connect to. I may always sit at a lecture theater and look like I'm angry at everyone, even though I'm not. But my life is not insignificant. It is not as vapid as the pressure around me might be. It's a fascinating divide. There's the Alex Blank doing all these things, writing articles and stories and speaking at TED events. And then there's the other Blank, hiding chocolate under scarves, locking herself up in purple passages, answering questions with monosyllables rather than the truth. Always tense, contracted, alien, and alienated. Even now, I'm sitting here, prepared to talk. But would I ever scream out unannounced? If I was approached spontaneously, without having the time to prepare, I would probably smile uncomfortably and reach for some undigested leftovers from words and phrases I use for conversational emergencies. No matter how much I want to connect with someone, I don't know how to do it organically. And maybe that has to be okay. All I do know is that I want to give the silence a voice. If the power of words, of positive communication, is so strong, imagine if the power of silence the sidelines, the unsaid, was perceived as just as powerful. I would like to achieve the arguably impossible and to put the negative next to the positive, make them both equally visible. Isn't that the point? The yin and yang of things? There is a sense of independence I am exercising when I don't repeat a word or when I'm not a part of the group. Since whenever I am with people, my interactions are based on, to some extent, mimicking what's understood as normal behavior. Whenever I don't mimic, I feel more positive and more myself. There is so much inside of me that never comes to the surface. I feel everything so deeply and I hide so much of it. I really am like a volcano just waiting to erupt. And I didn't choose to be like this, but if someone told me they could turn me into a full-fledged, positively charged human being, I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't be here right now if I wasn't like this. And thankfully, I don't have such a choice to make. But all I can ask is for you to choose to acknowledge me and all the other blanks as we are, to try to read us between the lines, 
even if it does require time and effort and patience. And to keep in mind that what they say is true. It is always the quiet ones.